Hi friends, I'm Jeffy G. I know I'm wearing a guitar, but the subject today that I want to cover are the new MIDI controllers, and specifically how you use them with Logic. If you've been keeping up lately, Arturia announced two new keyboards. Their KeyLab Premium, which is their high-end keyboard, and a budget version called KeyLab Essentials. In response, Novation came out with their Launch Key Mark IVs. And months prior to these releases, a lot of attention had been paid to the Native Instruments Control S series, primarily because it has such a beautiful display on it if you're using complete control, and it had polyphonic aftertouch. Another notable release that came out earlier in the year was the Korg Keystep, which incorporated MPE and MIDI 2.0. And despite all these new releases, you might be surprised that I'm not satisfied. I'm not finding what I expected in this next round of MIDI controllers. In my current setup, I'm using the Novation Launch Key 61, and this is a Mark III. And this is sort of my everyday MIDI controller that I use for playing, inputting MIDI, playing parts. But I also take advantage of some of the control surface features. In my display setup, I might have the arrangement window up here and a mixer down here, but I do use all the transport controls, the play, the stop, the forward, quantize, click, all of these controls that are built into the launch key for kind of my day-to-day -day stuff. And I, I would navigate through tracks using these track buttons, and I might use these buttons for mute and, and uh, solo. And then the encoders will depend on the software that I'm using. So while it's in a DAW control mode, those encoders default to adjusting the pan, but I can also change them to do send A and send B. And then by pressing shift and custom and there are four custom modes built into the launch key the configuration of the encoders the buttons and the faders change uh, depending on the software that i'm using so what you're seeing here is i've got complete control open and i've fired up an instrument which is the prophet 5 from arturia but because that arturia uh, plugin is NKS compatible, I can control it with the same MIDI mapping. So if I play a chord, all of my encoders are mapped and you can see them adjust here. This time I've got the Play Series 40's own keys. So from my controller, I can control the balance between these two sounds, the overall volume, the reverb and delay, and the attack and release. Now the interesting thing is, I have a Personas Fader Port 16 that I use for mixing, but I don't use it very much because um, some of the day-to-day -day stuff I can do right from this keyboard. So, you know, these faders, if I adjust them, they, they're also moving the faders on the personas because both of these devices have control surface capabilities. So when I'm looking for a new MIDI controller that I can use in the studio, I like this configuration. I don't need more than 61 keys. These are semi-weighted keys, which is just fine with me. I don't need piano style fully weighted keys, nor do I want an 88 key keyboard to fit in here. I have a limited amount of space. I try to be as efficient as possible with uh, my desk set up here. This keyboard has a, you see a shelf that sort of goes underneath instead of having a drawer. And I, I like that setup. I wouldn't want to lose that even if I buy a new controller. Am I getting too picky? I don't know. I have a wish list of things I'd like to see in the next MIDI controller I buy. The first category, basic stuff, Logic DAW integration. Fortunately, most vendors do deliver this, but I'm not looking for just the basics here. I'd like it to go to deeper levels and provide at least some 
programmable capabilities, if there are things that they don't deliver that I want to be able to add. Plug-in integration, at a minimum, complete control in Arturia Lab. I'd like them to work. The thing is, if you buy a keyboard from Native Instruments, of course it works with complete control. And if you buy a keyboard from Arturia, it works with Arturia Lab. But try to get a keyboard that works with all of these things, including a lot of third-party plugins, then it gets a bit more difficult. I would like a larger display. Something that represents what's going on with the keyboard would be awesome. I don't mind the keys that are on my launch key. They're not bad, but I think there's room for improvement there. It's the second category of things that I'm looking for. Polyphonic Aftertouch, MPE for Expressive Playing, and MIDI 2.0. These seem to be the things that have been promised for the last few years that aren't built into just every keyboard that you go looking for. So if you were to just look at those criteria, the Native Instruments Control S61 Mark III seems to tick a lot of those boxes. It does have the larger display. It does have a better keyboard. It does deliver logic integration. And certainly there's plug-in integration with complete control and anything that's NKS compatible. But amazingly, it still doesn't have MPE or MIDI 2.0. The Archuria Key Lab 61, kind of a funny situation there. It's much better than the old Key Lab. It does have good logic integration. There is plug-in integration, but it's primarily with the Arturia Lab software. You're going to have to do MIDI Learn or some other capabilities if you want to use it with other plugins. The display is pretty good, much better than what I'm used to, and the keypad is slightly improved. But guess what? No polyphonic aftertouch, no MPE, no MIDI 2.0. And it's the same with the Novation launch key. So I have a Novation launch key. What's the big change from the Mark III to the Mark III? The encoders are endless now, which is a good improvement. And they've rearranged the layout so that the faders are on the left instead of the right. I guess for a lot of people that matters. For me, it doesn't matter that much. The display, not much better than before. Keybed, only slightly better than what I already have. Still, no polyphonic aftertouch MPE or MIDI 2.0. So where can you get an MPE controller keyboard? Well, it turns out there's only a few places. That's some really cool technology, but guess what? They're not good at controlling Logic. The integration with Logic is vastly inferior to Native Instruments, Arturia, and Novation. Since a lot of the new breed of MIDI controller keyboards do not have MPE and MIDI 2.0 built in, one scenario is that you own two keyboards. One that you use in the studio for your day-to-day -day production, that has DAW controls and logic integration, and another one that you use for those expressive parts that takes advantage of MPE and MIDI 2.0. That seems to be what the market is suggesting, that you end up with two controllers. That would explain why Roley released their M-Block keyboard. It's small, it's a limited number of keys, but it's enough keys that you can use MPE and do those expressive parts, whether it be strings or brass or a solo instrument. Maybe you don't need more than that limited number of keys. Or maybe this is just the way vendors are responding to consumer demand. It could be that there's not enough people like me that want everything in one keyboard, and they're content with the idea to have a separate keyboard for those expressive parts. 
Well, the short answer is buying a new MIDI controller keyboard, specifically for Logic, it's not a great time right now. A lot of the features that I'm looking for that would be in one keyboard just aren't there yet. So I kind of have two options. One, I can get close to what I want by buying that Native Instruments Control S series keyboard. And I might do that. I'm keeping my eye on the price, looking at the Black Friday sales, looking at what kind of deals you can get in the fall. The two keyboard option is probably practical, but I find that the Rolly Block M is just too small. It's just too few number of keys to really play expressively. I'm going to need at least 61 keys to do that. That leaves things like the Osmos or the Seaboard 2 which are very expensive to buy. Now I skipped keyboards from a lot of vendors and if you're watching this video you might say, hey Jeff, why didn't you cover M-Audio or Nectar or some of the other players? One of the reasons is they haven't come up with anything new recently. If you own one of those keyboards, I'm really interested in your opinions. Add something to the comments, ask me questions, I'll be happy to respond. Like all the videos I make, I'm not sponsored by any of these vendors, and I'm just sharing with you some of my findings to help you make a decision on what MIDI controller keyboard might be right for you. If you found this video useful, click on the like button, consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you'll come back. Thanks for watching.